I'd like to introduce Nick Dygan, and as I said, he's the manager of Headspace in Geraldton. And Nick has done some really interesting work since taking on that role. So please welcome Nick Dygan. Um, firstly, thanks to Colin and Jane and Diana for uh, inviting me to have the opportunity to speak with you tonight. Um, I am aware that uh, I live here and I'm here every day and you're welcome to come and say hello to me in the office, but Jane is only here for a day, so I'll try and keep this brief so that we can capitalise on the knowledge that she's um, able to give us for the evening. Um, but I thought it would just be, um, I've been asked to talk a little bit about Headspace, but also how we're using technologies. So I came earlier today to the morning session where we had a client of ours that we've been working with for um, the last six or seven months um, who has used various forms of technology in her recovery. And so we lumped them together into a few different themes and I'm going to talk about them um, this evening. And uh, yeah, she was just a really powerful voice in helping to um, talk about the impact that technology can have on, on a recovery journey. Um, but the first thing I thought I would do is just give a very brief overview of what Headspace is. It's the National Youth Mental Health Foundation, providing early intervention support for 12 to 25s. Um, there are now just over 100 centres, um, and there is another six or seven coming. So it's a kind of a really established network, national network. Has been around for just over 10 years. Um, seen around 300,000 young people for around 1.2 million occasions of service and there's a lot of data around um, each of those young person's experiences which helps to inform, uh, like uh, keep evolving the Headspace network um, and making sure that it's relevant for young people. So what do we provide? Same as every other Headspace centre in Australia, physical health, mental health, um, drug and alcohol support and work and study support um, and it's all free. Um, entry point for all young people aged between 12 and 25 and um, the reason Headspace came about was because 75 of mental health conditions first onset is before the age of 25 and the earlier you can get in there to support and provide intervention can dramatically change the trajectory of that young person's experience with mental health to help to give them some skills so that they can remain engaged with their families, with their communities, with their school and not miss out on um, kind of years lost to, time lost to, mental illness. Um, so how do we use technology? Um, I will kind of zip through this, but if you have any questions at any stage, please feel free to, to interrupt me. Um, under each of these five domains, I've just got some pictures so that you get an idea about um, what the experience is like for our young people. So um, some of these are young people that are current clients, others, um, we couldn't find uh, young people willing to be in some photos, so we've got some staff that have posed. <laughs> um, and others are um, ambassadors or young people in the community that aren't current clients, but that we have requested to come in to help evolve our service delivery options. So the iPad surveys. Um, these, does this have a pointer, I wonder? Yeah. So this, this is a couple of clients from this week filling out their iPad surveys in the waiting room. This is what our waiting room looks like. Um, and before every occasion of service, a young, when a young person comes in for their appointment with either um, the mental health, physical health, work and study or drug and alcohol support worker, they complete one of these surveys. Um, and in one of these surveys, the type of information that we gather is this is a, uh, an actual client that we're still currently working with. So at sessions one, two, three, and then seven, eight, eleven, so it becomes more drawn out so they don't have to fill this out every time. But at, so for example, at the first session, they are asked to fill out a K10 score. K10 is like a uni universal measure of d distress type rating. And so it asks the question, um, over the last two weeks, how much of the time have you felt tired for no good reason at all? And they're asked to rate that on a scale. That information, as they're filling it out in the waiting room, in these pictures, goes live to the um, clinician's desk and so they can see when a young person's arrived for their session because information starts coming up on their computer. Um, but, um, and they can see how that person has been tracking over the last week. Um, and also it collects some other qualitative information like uh, what's one thing that you have come here to seek support for or what's the biggest thing that's been impacted on you in the last week. 
So K10 is one important thing that it captures, but also it captures it over time, so it's not always quite this pretty, and clearly I've chosen a really nice looking example. Um, sometimes it can go kind of all over the shop and it helps the clinician to be aware of what are we doing in therapy? Is this working for you? Because if, the, if this line's going up, either what we're doing isn't working, or is there something else that you're not telling me about? Is there something else that's changing in your life? It's, it's just a nice transparent way to track progress through therapy. Uh, they're also asked to complete the life satisfaction score. So this one is out of 10. How satisfied are you with? Um, so there is occasion when we have staff that run well for some reason, so I don't really do clinical work anymore, but sometimes when we have staff that run well, I'll go in and do a session. And it's interesting, particularly for a first session, when, some, when someone's asked to do all this, and it might, it just leads uh, a really nice opportunity to, um, for the young person to get some information out there that they mightn't otherwise feel comfortable talking about. Uh, and Jane had a slide that, sh you don't talk about that other slide you mentioned earlier this morning about um, the percentage of disclosures. Mm, nine to 10 times. No, so using an app like this leaves young people nine to 10 times more likely to disclose something to their counsellor than if the app wasn't there. Um, so a lot of the time it's there and it's happening, but they just need an opportunity or a better medium with which to communicate it. Uh, so I might say something like, um, it's lovely to meet you. I noticed on the survey that you filled out that you reported that um, family life was at an 8 out of 10, but where you live is at a 2 out of 10, or something like that, something similar or inverse. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Or, um, you know, your friendships and your family life is going re really well, it's, you've rated that at an 8, but in terms of yourself, you've rated that at a 2. Can you help me understand that a bit more? So it just really helps you to get to the chase quicker because our young people are only staying for about four to five sessions. So the quicker we can get to the stuff that's there for them, that's really um, having an impact on them, the better. My Life Tracker, um, again, this captures general wellbeing, day-to-day -day activities, relationship with friends, family, and coping. So that's tracked across the course of their journey and a wellbeing score. Um, so that's tracked as well. So that's the iPad surveys. Um, and luckily for me, I'm very grateful to the Headspace network and also the bipartisan support that Headspace has received over the last decade, which has meant that ultimately we just get access to a terrific program that gives us that. Um, and so that, that really informs what we do and it's um, a really powerful tool. But that's just one way we use technology. Another is telepsychiatry. So we had one appointment today, one yesterday. Um, the client of ours that spoke this morning has had two or three appointments with telepsychiatry. There's a, um, a network of psychiatrists that we're able to tap into that around Australia that have different skill sets in particular areas. So if we get a young person presenting with an eating disorder type complaint or um, uh, maybe a tricky uh, personality disorder type curiosity, then there are particular psychiatrists that we can use. So here are our staff members that helped to mock this up. This was just about two hours ago. But um, yeah, we, we try to set the computer up in a way where it's kind of on eye level. We put it next to a chair and I'm often in there with young people because we have a support person in for the telepsychiatry appointments as well. I forget and I ask them afterwards and they forget. You put it at eye level in or next to a chair, people forget that they're really actually talking to a computer or a person through a computer. Um, our counts, so we have iPads and our counsellors recommend and use these types of apps with the young people that are coming to um, seek support. Uh, so apps instead of therapy, um, we ask these six or seven young Aboriginal men and women to come and rate. Uh, we, we were um, forwarded maybe a month ago a list of um, apps that were recommended to us to be um, useful for and relevant for young Aboriginal men and women. Uh, and we didn't have any young Aboriginal men and women that were using technology in our service. And so we thought, let's ask them if it would work in this context for, so none of these um, lovely people are clients of ours. They were good enough to come and help us out. So we spent a few hours going through a handful of apps and we asked them a bunch of questions like, how does it look? How does it feel? Is it easy to understand? Is it relevant for you, your mates, what, you, what people that you talk 
uh, two are going through. Would you be likely to use this in a group setting? Are you likely to use it at all? And for example, if we were to offer this as a service option, would it be something that you would prefer to do? Like, you know, maybe we leave a room free at Headspace with the iPad in it and you can come in anytime you want or you book weekly appointments because um, we know that um, not everybody has access to technology. So maybe if we left a room with the iPad and the um, Wi-Fi free for it, would that be helpful? So. Um, some of these maybe got lower ratings, I think, because they weren't specifically designed for iPads. They were designed for iPhones and there wasn't as good an interface there. Um, but encouragingly, likely to use. So except for Moojim, which for some reason didn't work for them, and ShakeUp, I think because um, it's better designed for iPhones than iPads. There's, you know, seven, 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 and eight, and qualitatively they were all saying, yeah, no, this looks really useful and relevant for me. I would use this. So um, that was helpful for us to know. And another, just this is actually the last thing I thought I'd mention before we I hand back to Jane. Um, this again is a national headspace initiative that's partnered with. Do you know who they've partnered with for this I one? Facebook. Okay, maybe it's Facebook. So this is reword. Um, <coughs> Uh, is um, a software program that parents, um, family members can put on all of their computers. Uh, they don't currently have the technology to have it um, put on top of iP iPhones and iPads, which is an area of um, development for them they're currently looking at. Um, but once you install it on your computer, um, it means that if somebody is ever writing any kind of hate speech uh, on any social media platform, there is a red line that is struck, struck through the, um, the bullying or hateful or derogatory terms that someone is typing, and then an alternate or suggestion or an opportunity to say, you know, you know, have you thought about the impact this might have, or is there another way you could say that, comes up as an automatic prompt. And uh, their research identified that 75%, I think, 75% of the times that somebody was offered an alternative or thought about rewording, rewording what it is that they had written, they do choose to then change the content of the um, information that they were going to put on. So um, that was picked up by CNN and, and exposed internationally. And um, yeah, it's, it's really exciting uh, development that I'm sure in the very near future will be able to be overlaid onto iPhones and iPads. Um, and I've, I've talked with all the schools in the region about it. Um, but, and they, they shared it with, in their networks, with their parents, so I hope in some, and we shared it on our Facebook page, so I'm hoping that someone here has, has heard about it. Has anyone heard about Reword before? <laughs> okay, well, like our Facebook page and you'll get more of our updates. <laughs>